evening for a Bugs Life, a practical and halachic demonstration. I'm delighted to say that we have uh, two experts in the field, not one but two. Uh, just in case one of them doesn't find any bugs for you, the other one definitely will. But I'm sure they're equally uh, uh, capable and talented. But they bring two different uh, sets of skills and uh, are overlapping as well. But um, we'll talk about each of them in turn in a moment. Uh, I just want to say that it's a pleasure to have everyone here uh, at Kesha this evening. Um, I can see a number of new faces as well as people I know who have been here in the past and it's uh, again our pleasure to welcome you uh, here <coughs> for our program uh, tonight. Um, the uh, thank yous would not be complete if I didn't also uh, mention Ruthie, uh, Rebbitz and Ruthie who is uh, working hard in the kitchen as is frequently the case uh, and to provide uh, uh, an outstanding program uh, for us uh, here tonight and it was her brainchild and I'm delighted that it has uh, come to fruition uh, here this evening. Um, the story is told and I just want to say to my brother Rabbi Hillel especially that it's I heard from uh, dad from the bracha many years ago. You may remember the same joke. Uh, a fellow goes into a restaurant and he orders a bowl of soup and to his dismay he finds a little a tiny interloper swimming around and uh, he says to the waiter, he says, uh, what is this insect in my soup? So the waiter says, I'm very sorry, I'll get the manager's son. So the patron says, the manager's son, I would like to speak to the manager. So he says, the manager doesn't know one bug from another. The son is the entomologist. <laughs> uh, whether we will uh, get into the entomology of identifying exactly which genus and species the thrips and the arthropods derive from is questionable. I don't think it's so much our concern, as I say, from the scientific standpoint uh, tonight. But as I'm sure everyone in this room is very well aware, in addition to the aesthetic uh, um, sort of uh, unappetizing nature of consuming insects, there is also a Torah prohibition, more than one Torah prohibition in fact, and because uh, they are so small and in many cases well camouflaged, it requires special uh, attention and actually a measure of expertise as we will find out tonight in order to ensure that the food and vegetables that we enjoy and we serve our families and our guests are, are free of insects. Um, I remember hearing that until the 70s and even 1980s, the problems of insects in produce was less uh, severe than it is today. And I don't know for certain that's true, but um, that's what I remember hearing because the insecticides that they used to use, I don't know whether anyone here is old enough as I am to remember DDT. A DDT was a very popular insecticide. It was very widely used in the agricultural industry, but it was found to be carcinogenic and unhealthy in a lot of different ways. And I remember bumper stickers that said, DDT bugs me, and it was part of the early environmental campaign to uh, make DDT uh, um, illegal. And uh, so it has been in America and no doubt throughout uh, much of the world. And as a result of the fact that these very aggressive and very effective insecticides are no longer in use, so uh, the more gentle, kinder, more sort of humane approach to insects allows them to flourish in ways that possibly we don't benefit from. Uh, I don't mean to be cynical about it because, of course, the environmental impact of some of those aggressive insecticides is very negative, uh, again, for, for people, for animals, and for the ecosystem itself. So uh, the, the industry has found a balance that works for them between profitability, legality, morality, and all of that. But unfortunately for us, and certainly for the kosher consumer, the uh, assurance of insect-free uh, vegetables falls partly, at least ultimately, I would say, on the consumer and on the end user. Um, I just want to, to mention that I said in the like, 60s and 70s it was less of a problem, probably in the 80s as well, but now it perhaps is more of a problem. It probably is also true to say that the kosher consumer has a more sophisticated awareness today of these kashrut issues. And uh, again, possibly in earlier decades, uh, these matters were literally overlooked, you know, a little green threat, you know, what, if you can't see it, it can't hurt you that much. Um, but in halakhic terms, although there is something to that, if it's actually cannot be seen, it may be not a problem halakhically. But if it can be seen, if you know what to look for, then of course uh, we want to be sure to, to avoid it. So to a degree, we may be 
um, more alert and more aware of these issues, which possibly in an earlier generation uh, we were more sanguine about it. And I think this, again, is to the credit of our community and certainly everyone here tonight. I just want to end with one last uh, uh, comment, uh, which I remember reading. They say that the Chazon Ish, the great uh, halachic decisor who lived in, uh, in Israel, in Bnei Brak, the last uh, decades of his life, the Chazon Ish, um, would not eat a, a food especially uh, vegetables, if it was dark. If there wasn't enough light, he wouldn't eat it because he was concerned that possibly there may be insects there. And even though, no doubt, his wife was very scrupulous in checking them, but uh, B'nai Brock in the 1950s was probably not an insect-free zone, and therefore he was maybe concerned that between the kitchen and the table, you know, uh, something may have flown in. So uh, we find certainly among the great people, halakhic meticulous people, an awareness of this, uh, this issue, um, and therefore, to go back to where we began, it's a great pleasure for us and an honor, really, to be able to welcome all of you and to welcome two uh, uh, experts in the subject. Uh, who will be doing the presentation tonight. Just to say that um, Marcus uh, uh, Aloof is a friend of ours going back many years, and uh, he has had many years of uh, uh, experience in the kosher food service industry. He now is a chef at Novolino. You may have heard of Novolino. And um, uh, in addition to his uh, culinary talents, uh, he also has a role of a halachic shomer in the kitchen at uh, Novolino. And therefore, uh, to the extent that uh, one can eat at the Novolino with uh, a good halachic basis, it's uh, certainly in part due to, to uh, Marcus's uh, vigilance. In fact, he's not there right now. I can't quite figure out how they're getting by with that. But anyway, we're not in Novolino. You know, we're here with Marcus, so we're definitely okay. Uh, and we're getting one of his recipes as well, that's right, at no additional cost. Uh, my brother Rabbi Hillel Simon also has years of experience in the Kashus uh, field. Uh, he is a uh, senior Kashus supervisor for the London Beth Din, and um, he has been to many restaurants, probably all the restaurants that people here may have frequented at different times. Uh, Hillel has been behind the scenes in those restaurants to ensure that the highest uh, Kashus standards are maintained. Uh, Hillel oversees uh, the caterers as well, and certainly when it comes to checking for insects, this is an important part of, of his work. And therefore, uh, between uh, Marcus and uh, my brother Rabbi Hillel Simon, uh, we have uh, certainly a, a wealth of halachic as well as practical experience uh, to show us how to ensure that our fruit, vegetables, and all of those five-a-day campaign things that we're all in favor of can also be enjoyed and consumed with uh, halachic uh, precision. So that's enough for me. I'm not sure which of the two is starting. Uh, yeah. Excuse me, can I just, there's a lot of men that need to get in, so maybe if we put the ministers that way, then people can, the men can, the extras can stay There's a little line. bit more space. So. Yeah, okay, oh, okay. Then maybe we can move, if we move the chairs facing, facing the table, then that we are this way, we are this way around. Chairs, and then we can yeah. put some men standing, is that okay? Yeah. Might make some room. Rosie, it's, 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 it's not going to make a difference. Yeah, it's, it. it's not going to make a difference. You don't need Marcus and Rabbi. Well, there's one space extra, but there's also. Do you need a seat? No, you don't need. No, I don't. There's, 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 there's more chairs. Yeah. There's okay. Good evening. Great. Right. Good evening. Right. Thank you to my brother Rabbi Rashi and Rabbi and Ruth for inviting me to join with, with Marcus in this presentation. I'm going to streamline the halakhic part because the practical is the most visual and vivid and, and long lasting and important, etc. Um, the fact that we're full, this place is full, means we all want to join the ranks of people that the Torah has great praise for, as we'll see in one of my references. Uh, I know there's other things happening, but obviously you all feel that getting the Kashrut rights is, is crucial. So just, as I say, in short, talking about the status of bugs in Torah law. Some of the things you have here are, we're not going to dwell on, let's so just, just notice um, some things that we don't allow and why. Um, that's a, a demonstration of one of the methods which Marcus will be showing you. Fine, but I won't be dwelling on those. You can just take a glance or later, I'm sure, you'll have plenty of time to see them. <coughs> so how do we know that we shouldn't eat bugs and that it's a big deal? Um, <coughs> there are various verses, but here's, here's one of the demonstrations. We have a reference to Sheretz Amayim, right? Creepy crawling things at the bottom of the ocean, right? So we can't have anything that's Sheretz Amayim. We can only have fish with fins and scales. 
all those little things creeping on the floor. Uh, we can't have that's called sheretz of mine. The same word used for the bugs you see here. The word sheretz, the creepy crawly, it applies across a range. You have this is first of all sheretz of mine. Then you have the sheretz of sheretz ala aretz, the things that are uh, creeping and crawling all over the earth. The insects, most of the things like centipedes. Uh, the commentary Rashi mentions of Chumash, the centipedes are an example of that sort of thing. Uh, we have the Halechal Gachon, the snakes, right? Which are Halechal Gachon, maybe worms as well, probably the snakes. Um, and Marbera Glain, that's the, the one with the many legs, that's a centipede. Another Torah says, Al Tashaktsu et Navshut Echem Bukhala Sheret Zasharit. Don't make yourself vile and disgusting by eating these things. <coughs> right? I am your, I am Hashem, your God. Vit Kadishem, Vitev Kedoshim Ki Kadosh Ani. You should be very holy. It's quite remarkable that the same thing, right, that we tend to find disgusting, bugs in the West, in the Western cultures, we tend to find bugs disgusting. If you show a, uh, a Western chef the bugs, which will be passing around, they will find it disgusting, even if they wouldn't be willing to put effort into getting rid of them, as Marcus will show you how much effort we put in, they will find it disgusting in their face. In other cultures, they won't. Uh, I've heard the expression, we'll eat anything from the bottom of the sea to the top of the heavens, right? So not everyone finds it. And I would suggest, I mean, I could probably confirm this or not, but uh, the Western culture, the Judeo-something Judeo culture, probably is affecting how people feel about bugs. It could well be because of the Torah that we find bugs disgusting as part of our Western culture. Uh, it's not automatic to the human being to find these things disgusting. Fine. The Torah says it is disgusting and it will make you impure. And if you refrain, if you take care not to eat the bugs that are found in each item, to take care, you will be holy. Hashem says, just like I'm holy, by refraining from these things, you are making yourself holy. This is one of the things in Jewish life spelled out, lots of do with Havdalah, distinction between one thing and the other, that actually makes us holier, sanctified people. The work we do in checking and cleaning is not mundane at all, it's part of making us a holy nation. I get this idea from time to time. I don't know if any of you had this hope, is it dust enough to kill the bugs, right? Maybe some people harbor that hope. Is it dust enough to kill the bugs? It's, it's not. In fact, you might have an advantage in the process if they're alive and they're scared off by the soap and the salt that we put in and swim away. It might be better than if they're not alive. So no, it doesn't make a difference. Alive or dead, doesn't make a difference. You could branch into other parts of a halakha where it could make a difference, but in terms of bugs, it doesn't. <coughs> Again, we're streamlining this, drawing on a few important points. If you imagine a mashkiach using a magnifying glass, uh, they do sometimes. But I would never ever say... What's that? Each other one that Yeah. What, what I wouldn't encourage, and I had people thinking, we'll be really careful, we're really smart, they take out a big magnifying glass and they're checking immediately. But in that case, you'll find things that you shouldn't find. Only things that you can see with your eyes, right? You have to examine to find out, is that a bug? Something which you can only be seen with a magnifying glass, you're allowed to eat. My father, Allah Shalom, would often uh, point out that a camel, uh, a camel biologically, has split hooves. It's only the Torah says it has to be cloven through and through, shosat shesa, that it, it's going from top to bottom, that we don't eat a camel. But if you would ask a scientist, uh, is, does it have you know, split hooves? He would say yes, there's just a bit of padding on top and the bottom. Basically, he's pointed out that if you can't see it, right, the Torah judges things by what you can see. In terms of kosher law, generally, by what you can see. Uh, so the camel, you can't see the split hooves, it's not kosher. A bug which you cannot see, 
And uh, you know, your average water, if you take a microscope, you'll find it crawling with things. If you can't see it, it's actually kosher. The magnifying glass comes in when you're not sure what this thing is. Right, so that's this, some of the London Basin Dynamic examining things that came up. That happens from time to time, not every day, but from time to time, especially if we're thinking of getting rid of something completely, like uh, watercress and wild mushrooms. So we think very, very hard and take great care before we say, this can't be used. Other organizations feel differently, but uh, we, th we think very hard and examine very carefully before we say, you can't use that. If we have, there's a very good reason. Right. We don't dwell a whole lot on which kind of bug it is. Right? I prefer not to take things for granted, and when we check the water, as you'll see, the principal thing we do is check the water. I don't like to dwell too much on what you're looking for, because I'm afraid you'll look for one thing and not the other thing. Uh, still, just an example, what strawberries might have. There's green fly, um, insects that camouflage the form against the body of the fruit. It implies even more to the younger green fly with the thinner limbs and bodies. Primarily found under the green leaf, and may also be seen on the actual body of the strawberry, hiding amongst the seeds. So that's why, you, uh, I don't know if you have strawberries, we do have yeah, strawberries. Okay. Hopefully we'll get to them. But you definitely take off the top of the strawberry, the green, and the flesh just underneath the green. One of the most important things to do. Excuse then we're washing it carefully. We're always washing carefully and checking to see if our washing has been effective. <laughs> it's good to have some idea, but not to think, all right, I'm looking for something green, Anything else doesn't matter. Soap, uh, salt, or wine. What's that? Soap, salt, or wine that are recovered. Mm. Um, soap as a pre-wash and salt to actually check if the soap has worked. But in terms of color, I mean, it, it can be red. It doesn't have to be just green. Oh yeah, it can be, it can be any, any sort of color. Um, fine. Here's a, a very important point to distinguish. Most, many of you may have heard of checking things in the light. Uh, a light box or against the light and all that, that's very good. I wouldn't want to discourage anyone from doing that. At home, you have seven, eight leaves or ten leaves and a salad. Definitely check against the light, do your best. It's very good. However, we found with who knows of how many thousands of washes of vegetables we've done collectively, um, that the water, the water test can catch more things. Because bugs, for one thing, are very well camouflaged. It's called, my father would say, I think, biological mimicry. The bugs like to look like the leaf, and perhaps even the leaf likes to look like, like the bug. Right? Mushrooms especially, I think Marcus would confer, concur, you find lots of little things around the mushroom that look like bugs, and it's really dirt. And then you have things that look like dirt, and they're really bugs. So that's why the water is <laughs> a powerful thing. Also, there are things with lots of crinkly parts, really sophisticated. And can you really see inside every fold when you're checking? You know, maybe not. So the water has that quality of touching every part. Uh, so we suggest it could be better, yes? Um, on Shabbos, can you wash it in water if you know it's probably going to be bugged and you're probably killing it? Um, that's a very good question. Now the Dayalim, the London-based Dayalim, yeah, said we are allowed. We don't actually check anything but strawberries, as it happens, as a policy. But they say our process is allowed on Shabbos. I think one could argue, we could debate about it, but they, they, they do agree it's all okay. And that's just another example. Uh, just because it's pre-wash doesn't mean it's insect free. This is M&S. We actually prefer M&S to other brands, but nonetheless, we definitely check it with the salt, with the salty water, to see if any bugs come off. Because they, they certainly can. They have standard is higher than others, but it's not perfect. Certainly not perfect. The salt, sorry, salt is sufficient. Well, generally we, we pre-wash things that are problematic with soap, and then we check with salt, salty water. But yes, does that include uh, botic frozen vegetables? Do they need checking or or not? Hmm. <laughs> uh, the only brand we recommend of frozen is Eden. Otherwise, yeah. The only brand that we suggest is Eden. 
Um, some frozen things are so hard to check, it would be pointless for me to tell you to check them because it would just fall to pieces. So I've got to be a bit narrow and say we suggest the Eden, the other ones we have carefully checked and found bugs in the other brands. So with our very careful scrutiny, I don't mean throughout the system, but we have a specialist uh, who's checked very carefully and he found Eden to be by far the best brand. Kadastia also has the same pol uh, policy. So the other ones I can't really say. I'll tell you to check them, but maybe it's not necessary and maybe it falls apart and it's just impossible. So I'll just stick with the recommending the Eden brand. Thank you. Right, we're ready to progress to, to Marcus's demonstrations of all our, our methods here, our many items. Can I add something? Can I add? Yeah, sure. If you said that if we don't see something, then we are allowed to... That's correct, if so it's not if visible. the frozen vegetables, um, it's very difficult to see. But that's a very good so question. What you're suggesting is, if it's so full of bits that you can't possibly see it anyway, that should be okay. That is an argument. There, there is some argument to that. That's true with things that are pureed. We do allow, um, we do allow, everyone <coughs> allows pureed raspberries, where raspberries we would suggest never to eat at all, but when a company purees it, we would allow, or raspberry jam, where the company has pureed it. It gets into halachic niceties, but they pureed it, we do allow it. At a stage where it's just full of bits, if you spend enough time, you could find it. So it's difficult to say that's impossible to see. It's just tedious. So I'm hesitant to say yeah, that's okay. Because also a person with a, a less uh, uh, visual accuracy should see less. I think we do our best. Thank God now we all have, we have eyeglasses if we need them. Yes, there shouldn't be a vast difference between... Person, yeah. less. I mean, I have yeah. glasses and my daughter has glasses, but she sees... She sees more. Sharp. I think we just have to do our best. Really, Hashem wa'adla right? Shara wasn't given to angels. We, we have to do our best, and that's, you know, everything is in Hashem's hands. Yeah, Shara is happy. So, should we pass, at what point will we pass these out? Yes? Yeah, you said you, you can buy, like, the red raspberries, or back with them. No. Uh, there's a difference. If you're asking, I'm happy to explain. The difference is... Yeah. yeah, the question was, if I said you can buy pureed raspberries from a company, but you can't do it yourself. So what's the difference? There's a concept called Mivatel Isur Lechadchila which is to take something which you know is prohibited and purposely obliterate it. For instance, if you want to take a drop of milk, I don't know why you would want to, but whatever the reason. You want to take a drop of milk and add it to your chicken soup. And you'll say, a drop of milk will have no effect on a big pot of chicken soup. You may have heard the idea of batel de shishim. The taste of the milk is lost in the chicken soup. It's true that when it happens accidentally, it's lost in the chicken soup and it's kosher. But if you did it on purpose, throw it out. You can't do it on purpose. The raspberries are so infested. I mean, I just, blackberries are equivalents. I checked once a box containing probably 12, 10 or 12 punnets. Right? My computer doesn't know the word punnets, but we use it all the time. It must be somewhere in the English language. But those small containers we call punnets. So I found 9 out of 10, or 9 out of 12, punnets of raspberries. When I put them on a plate, 5 to 10 bugs crawled out. Right, so they're, they're so full of bugs that it's almost like taking a bug and pureeing it yourself. You can't purposely do it yourself. Some of the company has done it without any knowledge or care or concern with you know, Jewish people or life then fine, it's gone. But to, to do it yourself is like purposely trying to obliterate the bug. Okay. Well, I, well thank you ladies and gentlemen for coming to uh, Kesha. Kesha the bug. Um, okay, when you're checking, you really need to have good light. That's the first thing. You need to have good light when you're checking. And you need to have white bowls, preferably whiter than the, the clear bowls, but for this purposes you'll be able to see what I'm doing in the bowl, so that's why we have these type of bowls. Um, you look at the veg, when you're doing it, 
you have to you have a good look so you'll get an idea whether when you do your first watch wash is if you need to put soap for like a pre-wash sometimes you can you just put salt in the water and you just can do a check but like when you're doing things like lettuces and leaves they can be very very infested so it's a good idea to put just a little bit of um, soap into the water with a little bit of salt so when you're doing things like broccoli for an example what you need to do is really you should put them on a on a flame just to heat them just to heat it up a little bit just to warm them up and then you tap it on a on a white plate and then you then you will see if anything comes out if, there's, if you see there's a uh, bugs coming out you know that the, the the head is infested if not then you just go further then to put it in um, water with salt so what I'll do is um, I'll just take a couple of um, florets when you say heating, well, you, you, top, top you just you just just over the top top the flame. You don't actually touch the flame. Top. Just on top, just to get a little bit warm. Just tap it so that it wakes up any bugs, <laughs> and then it's easy. Then you just tap it on a plate, and then you'll see if anything comes out. So you'll just take a few um, florets. You just cut off the florets like that. You put a. A little bit of salt in the water. You don't need a lot of salt. When you put in salt in the water, salt will destroy a lot of the vegetables you're using. So you don't need a lot of salt. Um, so you just put a little bit of salt in the water. Um, always have a clean bowl to start with. And then what you do is you put your florets into uh, into the water. That's wrong. Yeah, I will get to that. What do you mean destroy the vegetable? Sorry? Destroy the vegetable. No, if you put a lot of salt in, say, like leaves, very, very soft. Uh, herbs, lettuces, things like that. If you put a lot of salt into that, then you're, you're just going to you're, you're going to deaden the, the leaves. Which, just salt, like, like dead sea. Anything that's that's very salty, it kills off anything. If you want just a little bit. You don't need to have a lot. So when you put it into the uh, into the water, you just go with your fingers just across the head like that. You just got to scrub it to get to see what comes out. You just got to loosen. Uh, you got to loosen. Uh, the, the little uh, pieces between each uh, leaf. We well, leave something in the water for a couple of minutes, two or three minutes, and you want to see what comes out, and then you check your water. The water is tepid, or? Normally you'd have a little bit of tepid water, yes. A bit of warm water. You don't want it too hot, but you just want a little bit of warm water. Is this the same for cauliflower or is this specifically for broccoli? Well, the same, uh, the same for, for cauliflower, yeah. You is this for the whole, uh, the whole head? Each one well, the, um, the now, actually, with the, when you've got it like this, yeah. the stem you take off, you don't, the stem, if the head is actually well infested, you can't use it. Yeah. But the stem, you wash the stem and you can use the stem for anything, like stir fries or whatever, or make a nice soup, mm -hmm. a nice cauliflower soup or something. So the stems you would be able to use, but the heads, if they're really infested, then no, you can't, you just have to throw them out. But is it necessary to clean this every floor like this, or mm -hmm. just one from each head? No, you've got to do the, yeah, you've got to do it. You want to do the whole of it, the age flow it, yeah? Because otherwise you just, <laughs> you say, how do you know then, that if you clean one, how do you know the others aren't going to be infested? Well, but you have a rule that in a big uh, box, for example, you take ten, you check them, yes. and if they don't have bugs, then you can eat the whole box. <laughs> we don't, we don't. About, yeah. I don't know if it's... No, you've got, to ch you've got to actually check. Everything, everything you want to eat, you have to check. So if you've got a box of, uh, of um, cauliflower or, or, or... What about cherries? Cherries, you just would wash, you just wash them. Yeah, beyond washing, you suggest washing everything. Yeah, but you open them also. It's, all right. I'm, I'm trying not to make life too difficult, <laughs> right? So we, to be sufficiently confident, but not... Not too difficult. So, without washing things, it's meritorious, it's a good thing to split every cherry or fruit. If you've checked the outside and you don't see any damage, you can eat it. I wouldn't say you have to split everything, 
If you checked it carefully, there isn't any damage, you could eat it. If you want to open every one, that's a good thing. Especially if they're But you don't want to put it, yeah. Well, if you see any damage, you have to check it carefully. Yeah, 10 ounces of quantity. They say it's like... We don't, I'll tell you. In this day and age, you could have one, you know, one planet comes from this part of the field, another one comes from a different field, or 10 miles away, or 100 miles away. It's very difficult to start relying on, on selections when there's, you know, it could be a hundred farms contributing to your, your Tesco's batch of, of fruits. So we, we, don't, we don't rely on that, that simple idea. We can find bugs that are perfect looking fruits. You can see a perfect trait. I'd say it's worth opening, but not absolutely necessary. That's and I hope none of you all are squeamish, but here, as we say in the trade, uh, one I made earlier, there's a selection of bugs that I have found in things that I've been washing at uh, Nobelino. That's not to say we have a bad produce, it's just that you can find it anywhere with anything in any shop that you'll go and buy. So sometimes you can be lucky and find <coughs> bugs that are quite clean, and even on the first wash you can be clean, but not always the case. So what is this from? Right, so, yeah, I'm going to tell you now, actually. So that is things from... <laughs> right, that is from things like lettuces, i.e. it's from cost... A lot of it is from cost lettuce, um, spring onions, uh, flat parsley. I say flat parsley, but parsley because we only have... Uh, we only use uh, the flat parsley, we don't use the curly parsley. Um, also from spring onions. Um, Primarily, um, yeah, things like that. Um, well, that's not from iceberg. We don't use iceberg, but it's from cost lettuce. Um, also, we get mixed leaves, which will have um, uh, also from that's also from um, rocket leaves. We use a lot of rocket leaves, and that also can be very invested. And like today, actually, uh, I found a lot of uh, bugs in the uh, rocket today. From yeah, so, so when you find, do you keep washing or do you say... Well, so what, you do, so what our policy is, what we do is, you have a bowl, <coughs> you, if you feel you need to do a pre-wash, which is with uh, a little bit of soap, then you do your pre-wash, then afterwards, because you've got the soap in there, you can't see nothing, see, it's impossible, there's no point to check. So you throw the water away, clean the bowl out, you fill it up again with clean water, you put a little bit of salt in there, then you, uh, you uh, a little bit of warm water, then you put your uh, leaves back in into there, having washed off the, the soap, and then leave it in there for about two or three minutes, three minutes, let's say, and then you'll take it out, and then you check the water then. Now, if that water is infested, you can do another wash. You have, we allow three washes, up to three washes. So if by the third wash it's infested, we generally say no, because it's just too much time to keep going and keep going. Um, at home, in the home, yes, you've got more time, you do, you could go a little bit longer, as long as you feel you need to. But sometimes you can get things that are so impressive, it's, just, it's not just even worth, because uh, uh, you, you can just be there for hours and hours just checking, because sometimes there are so many bugs, it just, you never stop finding. So it just depends on on, uh, on the actual condition of, uh, of what you're checking at the time. Do you use fresh spinach for salad? Baby spinach. We, uh, yeah. we, we use baby spinach. Yeah, baby spinach we allowed. Mm -hmm. And that can, be, uh, that can be problematic as well. It depends as well on different times of the year. Sometimes of the year when you've got the summer, the winter, um, and so on, autumn and, and uh, spring. It depends. Sometimes you can have uh, times of the year where you can get much infested. I remember last year where we used um, spinach and it was very infested. Um, I remember buying from Max and Spencer and I washed them and I kept finding bugs and I was getting shocked. I stopped using it, I wasn't sure if they were allowed spinach. We don't allow it. Well, the, the, the baby spinach, we, uh, we, we use the baby spinach. We don't use anything else other than the baby spinach. Although, when it's, you say baby spinach, the, the leaves are quite big, but it's still cast as baby spinach. Um, so basically, you're just checking the water. You're not checking the leaves. Well, you check the water primarily. You can check the leaves as well. You can, but you have to you check the water. That's you that's where you. We don't normally check each leaf. No, we you don't. don't you, check each you have leaf, got so the time in the industry. Up. You have got the time. Okay. That's why you have the water. As the Rabbi Simon was saying, the water is so much more powerful because everything will come off the leaf and go into the water. That's why you have the salt, which removes uh, the animals from the leaves uh, into the water. As mint. Well, mint is just like, and the same process, wherever leaf, whatever herb or leaf, lettuce you wash, the same principle of how we wash is the same way. So yes, mint can be also very problematic. 
Well, it just depends on the type of mint, where you get it from, where it comes from, which country. I've had situations where I've had things from Egypt, which are very, very infested. So you just don't know. I mean, some countries you can get, you can get things from uh, places where it's less infested, and other places where wouldn't, it's more. Infested. Wouldn't running water be better than the soaking? Running water. Under we do running water for things like um, um, salary, but no, because you don't want the water to overrun the bowl, because otherwise you you might lose any animals that's in the bowl. So you have to have. The water staying in the bowl, so you can check that yeah. particular. The, the insect. Of water. One thing to keep in track behind our whole method is that the insect in the water is a sign of more insects in the leaf. That's why we're saying don't spill them out. You might say, I don't want the bugs, spill it out. But we want to have the the sign. We're not checking it in the light, although it's good to do so. We're not doing that. Our sign that there's insects is what we find in the water. So that's why we don't want to lose that water. You want to catch the bug. And it tells you to keep washing it another time. Is this Did it have any? Right, so is a bowl getting loud for people to see? Yeah. Okay. Is this something that you said that if you're doing something for a restaurant, that you take one approach, and when you're doing it at home, you should take a more particular approach? Well, in the home, you have more time. So if you want to add to that. Right. I would say we're extremely particular, but. We might say, checking it three times, finding a bug in the third wash, we're going to throw it out because no one wants to spend the other hour and a half checking this six bunches of parsley, which is no exaggeration. At home, you want to keep washing it with soap again and again and again, and it's worth your time, you know, that's fine. What about at home, though, you wash it in the water and you find insects, but then leaf by leaf you wash under running water and lift up to the light. I would do that, and I would still soak it again and check the water. <coughs> that would be a good sign. Yeah. Actually, I don't, I, I don't understand uh, what you just said, because I would have thought you would be more particular in a restaurant where you're dealing with the rabbit than at home where you're dealing with a few people. I'm saying it's equal. Well, in, in the restaurant, we'll throw it out. At home, no, you shouldn't have to throw it out. Should, why should you do it any different at home and in a restaurant? Any I'm saying different. at home, you have time. You have to wash it in the restaurant. You pay the guys time to do something no, no. which is better to do with cash with. So well, that's how we said we'll throw it out. It's not worth their time another hour and a half to pay. Why not? Do you come across properly where there's nothing in Sometimes, like now, there's nothing in there at the moment. So yes, you, you can have time. Do you mostly find... Well, as I said before, it depends on where the coffee's come from. Um, where it's been stored, it could be stored next to a, a vegetable that's very infested, and that veg, that veg could have had the infestation then fall onto the broccoli uh, in the shop. You don't know where they store it, how they store it. But generally, it just depends on the time of year as well. So sometimes you can find, sometimes you, you're lucky you don't find. Marcus, we just go on to another yeah. product just to uh, illustrate. Right. Okay. okay, so uh, spring onions. She's asking about the tapping. Yes, how do you do it to get it? Is that? You know, no, the tapping, so in the, in the, in the very first year, when yeah. you take the broccoli, you cut the, you, before, you actually, actually, before you even cut the stem off, you just put it on top of the flame just to warm it up uh, just a uh, couple of seconds. The tapping, because then you, you should tap it to push out, to that fall out any leaves. Yeah, and you need any animals that are in there will fall out because the tapping, the animals will fall out. And then you go on to do it. And then we go on to do it. Whatever yes, whatever happens. Unless there's, uh, so many, uh, unless there's so many animals that's going to come out on the tapping that you think, well, if there's so many there, then it's so impressive and probably you, you want, there's no point carrying on. Excuse well, me, right. sorry. What other vegetables and things would you do the tapping with? Um, like well, cauliflower. Um, um, good question. Um, just trying to think what else. Um, no, no. Well, portobello mushrooms. Portobello mushrooms. Uh, it's, uh, oh, tapping it yeah, without the heat, or without, actually but without the heat. You do the yeah. portobello mushrooms are the big round mushrooms. You tap them on a plate, but we don't uh, need to use the heat on that. So I just want to crack on. So with these, what we do is we're going to cut the, uh, the tops off because this is where some of the animals could be, and then we're going to cut the V out here. And here we just cut the ends off where they've come with a knife. You don't know where the knives come from. So I'll just quickly show you. And again, um, put a little bit of salt in the water. Again, we don't really need to do the whole bunch. 
No, you leave it again. You leave it in the water for a couple of minutes. You have to see? Yes, because uh, it, it needs to have a couple of minutes in the water so that the uh, so that the salt can take effect and uh, and then any animals can uh, come out. So we take the tops off. Here we have what we call a V. This is where all the uh, green joins to the uh, to the to the white of the uh, of the um, of the spring onion, and that's where you can get a lot of um, insects in, inside there as well. So we don't we cut that off and we discard it. We don't use it; we just throw it away. And then you've got your lee, your your greens like that. Just put them in the water. And then with the white, we have to cut it open. So we split it down the middle. Okay, um, so with the white, we would split it open down the middle, open it out, because that's also where a lot of the animals can be. So you, gen you just put it in the water, loosen it out, put it in the water, leave it in there for a couple of minutes, so just so that uh, the salt will take effect. It's a good idea actually to, um, to just let the uh, salt mix around in the water. Uh, again, you just take the bee out, and then just cut the end off. Put it in the water, let it soak for a couple of minutes, and with the white, again, you just peel off any outer leaf that's not very good, and then you just slid it down the middle, loosen out the leaves so that the water can get into the inside the leaves. Just leave it in there for a couple of seconds, uh, like two or three minutes actually, and then you just uh, see what comes out. I mean, you can actually find uh, in spring onions a lot of uh, what we call flips. They are small black things, but it can be anything really. Uh, but thrips are like small black. They're the most uh, common things you you find in uh, spring onions, or at least I have anyway. Um, Would you do the same for leeks? Leeks, um, similar. Um, mm -hmm. I'm just going to leave that in. Okay, just take the end off. Cut the top off where the root's been. If there are, and this happens to be one with not much green. If there's lots of green, we would take off an inch or two of the green and anything damaged. This is all wonderful produce. Uh, so worth pointing out, if you have produce that's not so wonderful, anything which is damaged, discolored, damaged, you would take that off as well. Uh, yeah, any yeah, to leave it look Everything good. here is so quality, you won't get a demonstration of that, but it's important yeah. to mention. Obviously, you want to, you, the outer leaves is you're checking, but also you want quality as well for your actual dish that you're going to use it for. So if the outer leaves are no good, then uh, there's no point checking them anyway. Because if they're no good for the dish, then there's no point checking them anyway. Because you wouldn't use them because they, you know, you want some quality for your dish as well. With um, with leeks, ideally, you know, you'd run it under, you'd wash it under under running water, like we would you would normally do with the um, salary. So what you'd do is you would have your, you'd fan out your leek under the running water. So as the water's running down, it's washing off any bugs. But you wash, you put it into bowls so you can see then any water and check the water in the bowl. I only have the soap, celery and leek and spring onion. Is that enough just to wash it under running tap? Well, you've got, to, you've got to be able to see if there's any animals in there. So, you know, it's, you, you, you have your bowl underneath, you wash under under a tap, and then you just see um, when the bowl starts to get full up, and you just have a look and you see if there's anything in the... Um, but generally, by just washing it under the, under the water would be enough to... Um, the, uh, under the water. Either in the water or under the water, rubbing it up and down. Yeah. Especially with the green part. Especially with, with the green a sponge part. or a yeah. brush or a finger? Your fingers. Fingers yeah. or a brush, I mean, but fingers for that. This flap over here is where the dirt and bugs can exactly. often... inside there. Uh, so ...hide out. So that, that little flap there between the green and the white, especially scrubbing down. And the green would have much more dirt than the white, so you've got to be more careful when you're washing uh, things like spring onions on the leek, especially with the leeks, there's going to be a lot more, like here, you're going to have a lot more dirt at the bottom part of the leek. So. Did you, did you spit the green of the spring onion? No, we don't, but the white, yes. The white we do, but the, the, the green, we don't seem to need to do that. Yeah. And it's only keeping it uh, a long piece like that, the bugs yeah. will come out? That's fine. I mean, as long as you've got your tepid water with salt in there, mm -hmm. yeah, will get out. They, they should come out. Yeah. And you just wash that in salt, in water, in salt, sorry, in Just a little bit of salt, um, tepid water, and yeah.
I mean, obviously, things like the lettuces and the herbs, where they're going to be much more infested than you, you'd probably use soap in the beginning to do a pea wash. You have a look, as we'll come to that in a second, and we'll, uh, we'll see how infested that is and whether we need to use um, soap in the beginning as a pea wash, or we can go straight on to, um, to just using it with salt. So you just have a, a look in the water. I've heard of people finding things in the stem to do these things. Yeah, you can do. That's why we said. That's why we. That's why we said them. Well, uh, as far as I know, we don't have to do that. Which the stem, the green stems of the spring onion. No, it's um, not likely. It's always possible, but that's why we, as Marcus just said, uh, when you have a nice clear tube, and if it wasn't, if it was limp or rotten, we would take it off at the end. If it's blocked, then yes, you just. You know, the water is going inside. It's a very good chance of getting anything inside out. In fact, the bugs are more likely to be stuck to the outside, which you can just see, uh, than inside. So when you're checking in water, as we do in the industry, you need a white plate, small white plate, and you just go around slowly around the, the bowl um, with the plate just underneath the water, so that you can see on the plate, on a white background, it gives you more of a chance to see um, what animals that might be in the water, as opposed to using a different color um, bowl. And that way with the white plate as well, it helps you to see as well what's, what's in the water. Again here, you just move the plate around slowly. Again, sometimes, you know, you're, you, could, you it just you spot luck when you're washing as to how good quality the vegetables are. I mean, for this demonstration, we're just doing a small percentage um, so you're not going to always find, but when you're doing a lot of it all the time, you're going you're going to probably find at some stage something for sure. Um, so on this, there isn't anything at the moment. You're okay. thinking not using ice cream lessons. Is that automatic or for taste? No, we just don't use you it. Any questions? We just uh, we just don't use iceberg in, in our restaurant. Many many other restaurants do use iceberg. I had one time in my last job. I took an iceberg. If you can imagine, this is an iceberg. I uh, cut it open, and as I'm opening the leaves into the water, I could not see the bottom of the white bowl for so many bugs from just one head. Uh, I took a picture. I was so I was so flabbergasted about to see how many animals were actually in that one head of iceberg. Mm -hmm. So which is the best kind of lettuce from Alaska? Well, every lettuce, every lettuce is going to be problematic. It's just whatever your taste is, you go with that and you do the best you can in trying to, um, in trying to make it um, uh, uh, bug free. So let's do a little bit of lettuce now. Cost, cost can be very problematic. Cost has things, little black things, which we call thrips. You can get a lot of them in cost lettuce, a lot of them. So it's not as easy, it's not as... Cost isn't as, uh, as straightforward as you think to be. It can be, um, sometimes it can be um, quite easy in terms of bug free. It just depends on the, on the quality of the, uh, the cost you get at the time. What's I've the had least times. Infested What's the least before? What's the easiest lettuce to check? Chicory. <laughs> Very expensive, almost bug free is chicory. And uh, radicchio as well. Radicchio, radicchio is also yeah. fairly good, yes. Yeah. On the average, radicchio is good. It's good for the color and it tastes bitter. Uh, and the chicory is yeah. almost bug free. If I join Sorry. Chinese leaves can be very, uh, can be also very infested. Mm. It's like we use, uh, normally know, we use pak choy. Now pak choy is a leaf. It's a leaf with a white uh, stem on the end. Can you can find animals in there for sure? It's never bug free. It can take you Cost can be very problematic. Cost has things, little black things, which we call thrips. You can get a lot of them in cost lettuce. A lot of them. So. It's not as easy, it's not as, cost isn't as, uh, as straightforward as you think to be. It can be, um, sometimes it can be um, quite easy in terms of bug free. It just depends on the, on the quality of the, uh, the cost you get at the time. What's I've the had least times. Infested What's the least infested What's the easiest lettuce to check? Chicory. <laughs> Very expensive, almost bug free is chicory. And uh, radicchio as well. Radicchio, radicchio is also yeah. fairly good, yes. Yeah. On the average, radicchio is good. It's good for the color and it tastes bitter. Uh, and the chicory is yeah. almost bug free. If, if Chinese leaves can be very, uh, can be also very infested. Mm. It's like we use, uh, normally know, we use pak choy. Now pak choy is a leaf. It's a leaf with a white uh, stem on the end. 
can you can find animals in there for sure. It's never bug free. If you take it, you're not washed ice, but you rewash it again. If you, if it's like when you're buying pre-washed, as Rabbi said before, when you're buying pre-washed from the shops, you've got to, you've got to not rely on saying, okay, this is pre-washed, that's sufficient. You take it home, you've got to check it again, and then, and the same way you would as if it wasn't uh, uh, pre-washed. So let's take a little bit of this. Well, obviously, gush katif, it's already checked, but I mean, you still would uh, check it, wouldn't you? Our, our rule is really simple is to follow the instructions. The instructions on the whole leaves say wash it with soap and wash it really well. And the only, the cut leaves for the Alek Atif say it's ready to eat and we agree it's ready to eat. Does it make it easier if we wash it and soak it and then take a sponge and just wipe it over and then we, anything that would be stuck to it would come A couple off? things I would say that's true. Spring greens, we actually do that always. Uh, you probably don't even come across them. If you haven't had seaweed in a restaurant, it's really made from the spring greens. It doesn't come from the sea. Uh, that's what they use. And we found it helpful to scrub it down with a sponge. Uh, but it, it, it could help. Yeah, it could help. Yeah. Okay. But they don't move. You can't move them. But they it's just discoloration. Like oh, sorry, I didn't quite catch what you said. Dots inside the Chinese leaves. Well, it dots it doesn't mean to say that it's an animal. Like you can get you can get leaves which have black marks on them. They're not animals. It's just the way they've grown, and they're just part of the uh, the leaf. If it, doesn't move, then it's if it doesn't move, it doesn't mean to say it's not an animal. You've got to put it in the water, and you've got to see if uh, the salt or, or the soap will be actually remove well, it. If it doesn't remove it, move it then well, you can wash. You can you can uh, go over it with your with a with a brush or with a with a sponge or something. But generally, if it if it's not moving and it doesn't look like it, then it's part of the leaf. Okay, just very quickly with the uh, salary, what you would normally do is you take a brush and under running water. Well, first of all, you would cut. You'd cut off the, uh, the top because that's, that's where you'd get uh, animals that could uh, be uh, harboring inside, uh, inside there. And the leaves, the same. <coughs> the leaves, we don't use them. But I guess you could wash them just like you would um, flat parsley in the same way. Because uh, there's good uh, flavour in, in, in the leaves. But in the industry, we just don't have the time. We don't, we don't use it. So we just, but at home, I'm sure if you wanted to, you could. It's good for garnishing as well, whatever. So you just take a brush and under running water, you just... Um, you would just uh, brush off uh, all the way down in through the grooves and then go to the back using a brush. Ah, okay. You have to use a brush. Well, that's the easiest way, yeah, it's the yeah. quickest way. So you just go down like that with the, under the running water so that the water will actually push off any of the bugs. And the same way with the leaks, you have a bowl, you just want to see just, you know, whatever comes off. And, the, and that's, that's the way you would do the uh, spring on the, uh, the salad. So, um, lettuce. Let's do a little bit of lettuce for you. Just, if, you if you wash it first under running water, then why do you need to see... Can't you do that first and then check if there's still bugs? Yeah, because you, anyway, if there's, um, if there's bugs first, it makes no difference. You want to see if there, if there's still bugs once you've washed it? Well, you, che you, you wash it under the running water. Yeah, I mean, that, the first wash... Yeah, I mean, for, for, the, for, for, for leaks and... Uh, and uh, salary, it's the same process, just under running water with a brush and you, you just brush it off. Generally, you, once you brush it off, it should take off all, it should take off all the... Uh, all the so you don't need to check that water, that first glass of water? But in celery, no. In celery, we're actually scrubbing it so vigorously. That, that was but the, I think the leaks... Uh, but everything else we'd have to check. Leaks, the leaks, the leaks could always could still yeah. have slight budget. <coughs> okay, so um, I'm going to put a little bit of... Um, just a little bit of... Um, um, and can you use vinegar instead of salt? Um, ideally, so, uh, ideally salt would be better. Yeah, because it's because um, vinegar's got a taste to it, and you, you don't want to have um, a taste getting onto that. One. So then, just put a little bit of um, soap in there. You don't need a lot; just a little bit. You take your leaves. I mean, you can look at them before you put them in, in into the. Uh, I can see there might be something here. You can look into the. Uh, into the leaf before you put in the water. Again, when you're putting vegetables in water to soak, i.e. leaves, lettuce leaves or herbs, you don't want to pack the, too much into the bowl at one go because they need to breathe. So you need to have enough, enough room in the bowl so that the animals can 
can move around to come off the leaves. If it's so much in one bowl, the leaves are going to stay there because there's no room for them to come off. So you don't want to put a lot in one go in the bowl at one time. Mm -hmm. Can you use the same water for one after the other? No. 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 So slide because you are doing it. This is just for this is just for the demonstration. Yeah. Otherwise, we'll be back and forth to the kitchen several times, and we don't have. You didn't find in the broccoli any no. bugs. So no. 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 I did. Nor did I in the uh, spring onions. Found if I found, okay, so if I found in the spring onions or in the uh, cauliflower or the broccoli, whichever uh, you're washing, then you t you'd wash the, you throw the water away, you wash the bowl out, then uh, you clean it, you put it again, uh, top it up with water, cold water and a little bit of warm water, again you put another little bit of um, salt in the water and then you put the um, broccoli back into the water, you leave it for about three minutes, you rub it again and then you check again the water the second time. If again on the second time you find, you can go a third time. And then if the third time you find, then we don't use. But if on the third time you don't find, we have to go a second time to have two clear washes. So for an example, if on the first wash you find, and on the second wash you find, but you don't find on the third wash, then you've got to go and do a fourth wash. So you clean the bowl, throw the water away, clean the bowl out, fill the, uh, the bowl up again with um, tepid water, put your salt in there, and this is your fourth wash, and you check the water. And then if it's clean, fine, then you've got a past, uh, uh, past product to use. If you find that the second, the, the fourth time you might find there is one animal in there or something, it can be a bit lenient and you can try again. But for us in the industry, you just couldn't do that all the time because if you're doing it for a restaurant or even for catering purposes for a function, you've got so many other things to do, you just you, you couldn't. It's all written there, by the way. The vivid demonstration is extremely important. You can't catch all the details, the uh, background, and etc. the rules, they're in the paper. So again, you've got your soap. You just put the leaves in there for a few minutes. Again, I'm only showing you a small uh, percentage of um, what you might wash at home, or certainly to what we wash in the industry, which is loads of lettuce daily. So obviously, <coughs> this is just a small percentage. So you know, for a few leaves, you might not find, but when you're doing large quantities, yeah, you know, you uh, you do uh, two or three heads at a time, you you might uh, definitely uh, find something. But just for one or two li few leaves, well, it's just you have to see. Can I add a housekeeping tip? In our house, we, we eat a lot of lettuce at once, usually twice a week, and then I put it into a Ziploc bag with paper towel, what do you call it, paper roll? Yeah. I dry, we dry them, we dry them, and then I have salad on demand. Yeah. Rather than when a mother is in a rush and has to have salad for dinner, and you don't have time to check it properly, when you have a little bit of quiet time, one of the older children has quiet time, you get a lot of lettuce checked, you dry it down, you put it As long as it's nice and dry, it yeah. should keep for a few days if it's flat and if you don't cut it with a metal knife, it won't go brown. If you cut it with a plastic knife, it stays intact. But it's just a way to have salad ready. Yeah. Either that or order in from Novellino every night. I've seen the box. And again, when you're taking uh, whatever you're washing out of the water, always try to take a little bit at a time and let the water go back into the, uh, into the same bowl. Because if you take it out quickly and a large amount in one go with, with the water, you're transferring into a new bowl, you're taking that water with you, and there might be bugs in that water that you're transferring into your new bowl. So always make sure you get as much of the water off as you can and small quantities at a time. That way you get as much of the water off as you can and not take any possibility of bugs with you into the new bowl. Now, because we put soap, we wouldn't normally check the first wash with soap in. So you just leave it in here for a few minutes, and then you would check the, uh, <coughs> the next wash. Obviously, if I had a running tap, I would just wash off the soap before I put it into here. But this is just for demonstration purposes, so you get an idea. If you go to different countries, Israel, America, Far East, anywhere else, do you use the same approach? And also, if you are confronted with a vegetable that you have never seen before and it looks like nothing you've ever seen in your life, like you're in Thailand or somewhere like that, uh, what's your approach? Uh, I'll, I'll, tell, I'll tell you a story about new things. We do try to investigate new things. Someone came uh, in a restaurant, was using, what are they called? Um, projects, zucchinis. Cool. Yes, project flowers. And I came along and noticed this, and I said, "Oh, I've never seen this before. Um, we should investigate how to check this." Oh, he said the shomer does X, Y, Z. 
the same things that you've seen we do with, with lettuce leaves and things, he did with that. Everything is fine. I said, no, we have to investigate it before we just assume everything is fine. And I packaged it up in a, you know, carefully, gingerly, with a cling film, and a cup or something, I brought it to the office. And Rabbi Conway opens up the leaf, and we find two or three little bugs crawling at the bottom of the leaf. That's after we went through the process. I took one of them, I said, okay, this, what does he do? He does this, this, and that. Everything we've just done, I did all of that, and we found bugs at the bottom. It's sticky, and it's a very deep flower, a yellow, pretty, very pretty, but a deep yellow flower and sticky inside, so forget it. We said, don't use it. So if it's, if it's a new thing, uh, yeah, I would think many times over before assuming we can do the same method. In terms of other countries, other countries have more things infested. We're not checking uh, flour, unless it's left out for a long time. We wouldn't bother checking flour. In fact, I have a poster that shows a bug in flour, and I don't use the poster because we don't check flour, unless something left. When I go through a bakery, anything that's left open, nuts, or anything that's open a long time, I'll just give it a good shake, and sometimes you get moths flying out. Uh, anything you're leaving open for a long time, or you're having your cupboard for six months, or certainly open even for a few weeks, you have to be concerned with anything. But we're not checking flour, we're not checking beans and rice. Whereas in Israel, they, it's an enormous issue, all these things. So yeah, each country, you're going to check out you know, their particular authority, what their concerns. Yeah. Okay, so let's move along, this time is short. Um, I randomly took some, uh, some of this uh, lettuce, leaves, washed it, and it was, it was clear. But as I thought, that's clear, it's strange, because uh, it's unusual to find clear water. But I did, so having looked at some of the leaves without uh, having been in the water, I have found on here there is an animal on this particular leaf. So you have to be careful, it's just random that for this wash I didn't find, but there are animals <coughs> inside there because there is one on here. So would you, after you've done the salt bowl, would you check each leaf individually or it's sufficient to just check the water? No, you check the water. I mean, that's the whole idea of having the water. I mean, yes, we don't uh, say that you shouldn't use uh, checking by light, but ideally we find it's better you have your water because you could stay, you can. Yeah, there is a bit. So if you one. do find yeah, a bug. Well, there was one on there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's that. Um, again, um, with any lettuce leaves or any herbs, the process, like with any of the vegetables that we wash, it's always the same process. Either you're going to use soap or you're going to use um, um, salt, or even both, depending on the soap. How sure can you be what you see in the water is an animal and not a. Because yeah. when you've been doing it for if so long... You, if, you, yeah, if you see wings or if you see little feet, I understand that. But sometimes... Uh, do you that's know why if it's a thrip or do you know if it's from the strawberry that it's one of the little... Uh, well, that's why when you're doing it for so long, you get used to knowing what you're looking at. Yeah, you don't all work in a medina, so that's yeah. Well, it's, <laughs> <laughs> that's why if you... That's why... That's why I, I gave a selection of the, uh, that bowl with the yeah. selection of animals to give you an idea of what kind. There's actually one animal in there, actually from the strawberry as well, come to think of it. Trying to pass it around again? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can't tell you. Yeah, like to see. And it was a red animal, so if there's a red one in there, that's from the strawberry. Um, but, there are, but as I said, with any vegetable, herb, lettuce, whatever you're washing, the colour can match what you're washing as well. So, I mean, when the rabbi said that you can get green uh, colored with the scorbies, you can get red just as much, um, or even black. Um, so yeah, we're, uh, so again, with something like this, the same process, you uh, put a little bit of um, liquid, uh, washing up liquid into the water, you just need a little bit, um, and then you just well, you would cut off with a, if you're doing a large quantity, just cut off the bottom with a, with a knife. This you don't use, you just throw it away, and then basically um, you separate all your leaves, you have a look at your, as your um, obviously if it's not good for eating, the quality is not good for eating, there's no point putting in the water to check it. If you're not going to eat it, there's no point wasting your time to check it. Um, if, it's, if it looks good, then you put it in the water. Those you, edges are brown, you have to cut them off. Sorry? No, the edges of the leaf is a bit dark brown. Yeah, they are brown. Yes, you, you cut them off when you come to um, when you come to present. See, like, here, for an example, pass that around. It's a good example. And it's alive. Pass it around. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone's hungry? <laughs> 
Okay. Um, oh, this one is uh, nicely infested. So. <laughs> It depends. I mean, if you're saying one or two, you 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 check it. If you're going to find many, many, and I mean, and I mean many, then, then, then you just, you just don't. Out. Like I said before, with the iceberg lettuce, you have one big iceberg. I cut it in half, put it in the water, and as it entered the water, hundreds of animals came floating out of it into the water. I couldn't see the bottom of the boat. I even took a picture. I was super shocked to see so many animals. Then like that, you just take out the water, throw it away, and you just don't waste your time, because it's impossible. There were so many there. And there are quite a few on this one. <laughs> don't mind, they don't bite. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Again, never pack the water too much with uh, with uh, any uh, leaves because you want uh, room for them to uh, to breathe, so that uh, any possibility of having any uh, animals, bugs on there can have room to come off into, and go into the water. So even after all the washing, you never actually hold it up to the light. Well, you can do, but the, uh, as we've been saying all along, it's primarily the water is the best product, is the best way to check uh, to check for. Because then, if you're doing it one by one, it's also can take a lot longer as well. If, if once you've transferred onto the first bowl to the second bowl, and then you check the water, the first one with the soap in it, you don't check it. That's what we call a clean wash. So, you put it into the so then you take it out after you wash the soap off. You put it into a, another clean bowl with soap. You, uh, with sorry, with salt, with salt water, a little bit of warm water, so it's tepid. And then after you've had it there for about three, four minutes, you take it out. That's when you check it. That's what you call your first wash. And then what happens if you find all five of the bugs in that? You do it again a second time. You do it again a second time. If you find a second time, you go a third time. If on the third time you find finished, you finish, you don't use anymore. If you don't find that third time, you have to go a fourth time. And then check again on the fourth wash. You have, to have, you have to have two clear washes of water to, 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 to be able to pass your item that you're washing. At least that's uh, Lambertin's uh, policy. The pre wash, you have to, again, you have to check it just like you would any other. <coughs> yeah, you probably would, you wouldn't need to. You just put it into a little bit of salt water as you would do at the first stage after your pre wash. So the last how do you check um, the sugar fat peas? Why, can we have a bit of quiet so I can hear what the, uh, the gentleman's saying? Quick question about how you check sugar snap peas, Mons 2. Well, that in the uh, in the industry, the, we don't uh, are not allowed to use that. Um, if you want to do it at home, that's another story. Um, we don't do it. Usually, spot. if you check out the light, you can't tell if it's a black. Definitely a open. The truth is, the sugar snaps and Mons 2. And one of them, we allow by opening every single one and checking for maggots and worms. Another one we don't allow at all, ever. I can't remember which is which. So I think I think it's a manj too are even harder to look at. They just fall apart when you open them. But with sugar snaps, you could open every single one. Check inside for maggots and things. Same with uh, Buster's Facts. We don't know. We don't know. We don't know. We don't know. We have never investigated cashew nuts, so I can't really comment. One time I opened one and I found little worms. Yeah. We've never investigated them, so I can't honestly say. Oh, I've seen this. Again, I don't really know. We don't check them, no. We, we allow them to be used without checking them. Now I'm getting into here, which is my first. We had a question about green beans. I think we should, yeah, maybe keep those soaking and, and do the cabbage, maybe. But uh, <laughs> well, we don't, we allow the use of green beans freely. Do I need to cut them open and look inside? No. Although I did find that green bean. <laughs> <laughs> if you do enough and you keep finding bugs, let me know. We'll put an expert on it, and there may be that much less food to eat. And, uh, <laughs> Artichokes. Artichokes are uh, infested and very hard to check. We only allow the bottom, tinned bottoms, the solid parts. Uh, the confusing thing is that in, in the French, when they translate it into English, they call the bottom of the artichoke the heart of the artichoke. Whereas in England, or in America, I believe, in England, the heart is the very thin, fine leaves, which are the problem. 
Right, we used to check before my time. We said to use tinned artichokes, the hearts, which is the fine leaves. But when someone started checking carefully, they found bugs again and again and again and again. By the way, never, ever, ever use tinned asparagus. We checked four or five brands. Everyone had bugs in every single tin. Don't ever use that. In fact, you may have noticed, if you're a keen-eyed shopper, they disappeared from the shelves of Kosher Kingdom and just kosher because we said, forget it. Is the jar uh, as well or just the tin? Uh, the tins. The jarred are, are white, usually. They might be okay. We have, we have a method you'll see on the paper for checking the jarred ones. You can use stalks yeah. of asparagus, just the stalks. Well, hang on, we've got some asparagus here. We'll show you. Yeah, let's, let's, let's do that next. Okay, green asparagus. Basically, because the green asparagus, the heads, can be so much invested, we don't use them. So what we generally do is, um, we, would take in this, we would take the asparagus, we would cut the head off at the top, we just throw it away, we don't use it at all. Is that, um, that was just the head. So that was just the head. Just the head. But then, you would take a peeler, and you would peel all the skin off. And uh, you just cut the bottom off, and that's purely as well, not because of animals, but also it's very uh, woody, and you don't use that anyway. So you just cut the uh, bottom off, you've got that part, you just peel it off. Once it's peeled, then you're ready to use it. Peel what? Is there anything left to it? <laughs> well, that's why, that's why it's ideal to get the, uh, the, the big thick leaves. Um, I don't know, if we had small ones like that, you'd, you'd, you'd <laughs> we would shave it and there'd be nothing left, that's true. <laughs> that's, that's the point. Yeah, what about the white green? Yeah. Who are very thick, and well, then the, you can actually take every leaf and well, look under when you, this is like This is quite a thick one compared, I mean, to, well, compared to uh, this one. So obviously yeah. it's going to be easier to work with. So you've got, to, you've got to peel it to take off all the skin. You take off the head, bottom, peel it off, and that's it, then you're ready to use it. Uh, just give it a quick wash, and then it's uh, ready to use. So obviously you want to try and buy the, the thick leaves, uh, thick stems, which is more better. You can't um, with the white. Much. Yeah. Contrast it with the white, which is, right? you contrast it with the white, yeah. guess, which is much easier to use. So. Okay, with the white asparagus, obviously because the white asparagus, the head is more closed, I mean so much closed that there's very little chance of any mammals being in there. Nevertheless, it's, it's good just to wash it in water, but white asparagus, you don't have to take the, the head off and you can, uh, you can just use it once you've washed it all off. Make sure, obviously here, you've got, um, you've got little, uh, little leaves that are like that, just peel them off and you just see that if there's anything there, generally there isn't. And then you can just use it. Can you use green asparagus if you boil them? Sorry? Can you use green asparagus if you boil them? You have to cut them? Well, once you, before, you, sure. before you boil it, you've got to cut the head off, you've got to cut the tail off, you've got to peel it before you can do anything with this asparagus. Mm. So you don't Especially you the green one. So you need to soak them, but you don't, the white asparagus. The white asparagus, you just wash, you just, you just got, you, you wash it in the water, but you can use the head, uh, the tail, the, t no, <laughs> sorry, the tail, the bottom part, can be woody, so it's chewy, so you just cut that off. But you don't have to cut the the the, um, the white head off because it's so enclosed. I mean, if you see the difference, this is much more open and this is much more closed. So therefore, there's more chance of animals being in there than what there would be in the white. And you it would just. Well, if the white asparagus has opened, as you'll see, some of these have a little bit open. I would do the same method of putting it over the flame like with the broccoli. Over the flame for five, ten seconds, tap it on the plates, things could possibly come out. When, when it's starting to open, right, the ones that are more developed. How, how close do we hold it to the flame? Is it too hard? Well, just a little bit above the flame, just enough to get a little bit of heat on it. Sink chitters, maybe? Yeah. I mean, you don't want to burn it, but you just want it to get a little bit of heat to it. Corn on the cob. 
Yeah, but what about the, uh, what's it called? The, uh, there's, there's a method in here. Or it should be. Yeah. I don't know the right. What about baby? That's yeah. Maybe, maybe extra sure. Um, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Sweet corn is in here. Yeah. 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 Don't take yeah. the baby yeah. cord away. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, with the sweet corn, although it is written there, just to make it a bit more dramatic, uh, I was in a caterer's kitchen, small, probably the size of this part of this room, um, and I went from, I started taking the husk, you use the word husk? Yeah. Husk, right. The peel, right? I think so. You take the husk off the corn, and I find it's covered with thrips. We call everything a thrip, but anyway. Thrips, right? And I take it to the other side of the room to show the caterer, and by the time I got there, they were almost all inside. Which is why I suggest I gave the showmer a little extra work. I don't like to do that, but a little extra work. I said, if, however many they get, you got to open each one yourself. Keep your eyes open as you take it off. Because they'll crawl straight inside. Uh, so you gotta keep, you know, keep your eyes open as you take the husk off. In between the kernels. What about the baby corn? Baby corn, we do a random check. Like are what? they inside there or not? They just wash it. There are some tongues. We would take one and, and sort of almost take take one apart to see if there's a problem. If they found a bug, we would then put it in water. But normally we don't check them. The tin baby corn, again, well, I'd probably <laughs> maybe check one, a random check, but it's very unlikely, so we don't normally check them. Someone has to yeah. make it into the corn. Yeah. The, the corn kernels. We don't check them. As a matter of fact, frozen corn on the cob, we also allow using straight. Frozen corn on the cob. Well, it's, it, yes. I think they sell pre washed. Pre-cut vegetables. Are you allowed to eat those, or is there a problem of being suspicious of what they chop the vegetables with? The chopping, I wouldn't worry about uh, from a proper store, but we'd still check it. Anything yeah. with leaves, we'd still check in the same way. Chopped spinach. Chopped frozen, spinach. Chopped, frozen chopped spinach. We do allow that, like the pureed raspberries. As bad as spinach is, if it's chopped frozen, we allow it. Yeah. Frozen mushrooms. Do you have to check them? Which kind of mushroom? The, uh, the sliced ones. If they're button mushrooms. No, sliced. Yes. Well, sliced. Yeah, button, sorry. Yeah. Button. Then that's okay. We allow tin. The button mushrooms are so safe that although we would check them when they're fresh, we allow them tinned. No, frozen straight. Frozen. frozen equally, if it's yeah. that kind. There are kinds of mushrooms you don't allow. Porcini mushrooms you can get frozen. They're a kind of wild mushroom, and we simply don't allow them at all, as you see. They have translucent little translucent worms in them, so we don't allow wi wild. And they did get actually one. And not only knows it happens, <laughs> they uh, got these porcini frozen mushrooms, and they're a kind of wild mushroom. We wouldn't allow them, but if they're just button mushrooms, we do. Do you take the stalk out of each mushroom? How do you mm -hmm. check that? How do you check that? Right. Okay, mushrooms. Yeah. Button mushrooms. You can talk about each one, you know, separately. Yeah. Okay. Well, just as I'm as uh, before I talk, I'm just saying that with this lettuce now, I've just taken it out of my first, what I call my first wash, having had a pre-wash with soap. Taking out my first wash, check the wash. There's nothing in there, so then you could go ahead. That doesn't mean to say in the in the rest of that that there isn't anything in there, like before. So you, you just never know. So with the um, with the mushrooms, again, you take button mushrooms, you put them in your water with a tepid, uh, tepid water with some salt, you, you wash off, because you've got a lot of mud in there. Now, the, now, it doesn't mean to say the mud is animals, but they could be, they could be, um, there could be animals within the mud. But say this is a, a mushroom, so what you do is, you've got, you've got your stalk coming out of there, here, where the stalk is, that's where you might find uh, the animals. So again, you've got them in the water. You uh, you just with the fingers, you just wash them around and, and uh, brush off, uh, and then you just check the water. You don't have to peel mushrooms. No. You don't, don't have to take the stalk out of No. No. It's like when it's like when I come to do the strawberries. Again, you don't want to have, for example, with the strawberries. So when I wash this, when I do the strawberries, when you cut the green stem off. You cut the green stem a little bit uh, of the flesh, as the rabbi said, but you don't want to have too much taken off so you don't have a hole, because you'll find there's a hole there. That you don't want to have a hole where the animals, if there are any, will crawl inside to the strawberry. So you, you don't want to take off too much. What is the other kind? There's a portobello. So portobello, yeah, we use portobello. So portobello, um, 
Okay, so let's take a plate. This is a large portobello. Again, you've got uh, stem. So what? Wait, well, you you certainly got inside. You've got the you've, you've got the what we call the uh, gills. Like um, so again, in tepid water with uh, with some salt. You soak it in there for a couple of minutes, and you just rub uh, your hand around, wash off uh, like that, uh, and then you just check the water. The water will be brown, so it might be a good idea. Is if you want. Just um, again, take out into another clean bowl, and then you check that bowl. When, yeah. when you first tap, though, you can get spiders coming out. Basically, ah, so yes, you give a good one. tap before it goes you in, because a, a spider might come running out. Uh, what you do at that point? I must say, in the industry, uh, we would throw that one away because <laughs> you're checking sometimes 25 boxes, right? That's unusual, but possible, or at least one or two or three boxes. So if I find a bug coming out of one, I throw that one away. Not a big hefsid. If you're only doing five for your little dinner party, then there is another. I, I wouldn't say to wash it because we haven't tested that the washing works. You can scoop it out. I'm sure there are some books that say, scoop out all the gills from the inside, uh, then you're pretty safe just washing the rest. Yes. I have an environmentalist called Tashka's question. Let's say you yeah. find him that's quite infested and you're not going to use it. I know with meat and milk you can't give it to a non-Jew, but with insects I assume you can. You so can, if you certainly. have a friend or a cleaner that's a non-Jew, can you say, I have too many vegetables, would you like to drink? Yeah, that's a very good idea. So it's probably better than you putting it in the rubbish. You really don't like them. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a good idea. I, I think I do. Really it's a very good idea. Thank you. Yes. So it's, yes. Ruthie's idea before of actually uh, sponging down with soapy water every leaf. Does that guarantee, um, if you rinse it well afterwards, that you don't then have to uh, the second? Oh, I would definitely put it into the, into the, into the salty water. Yeah. If you want every leaf, that may be better than soaking in soapy water. Although Rabbi Vai, one of the biggest experts in Eretz Israel, he says to soak it in the soapy water. So I think it's a very good idea. Maybe the sponging off is even better. I would definitely put it, check, check my work by putting in the salty water afterwards. To see, has that actually had the desired effect? Okay, I've just put some parsley, flat parsley. We only use flat parsley because the curly parsley can be so much infested that we just don't uh, we just don't bother. It's much easier using the flat parsley. It's easier to check as well. So I've just put that in a little bit of soap. I'll soak that for a few minutes and then I'll come back to it and I'll show you with the cabbage what we're going to do with the white cabbage. With the white cabbage, slightly different from a red cabbage. What we do with the white cabbage is you just cut the end off where the roots been. You wouldn't use that. And then you just cut it into segments. Once you cut it into segments, you look at the other leaf if it's good or not, you throw it out. And then you just fan, you fan through the, uh, the, the every leaf, making sure you pull them apart. You look at the back and the front and you check to see if there's anything on the, on the leaves. This way, because it's white, you easily can see it. You don't necessarily have to wash it. Whereas with this you will, you'll see in a minute, you have to wash it. You just check every leaf, pulling it apart and you look. You turn it around, you do the other side, and again, you just check through every single leaf. You must open up the leaves and you check every leaf, just to make sure you look through every leaf. Because you can sometimes find... No. What about white bugs? No. White bugs? I found white bugs in cabbage. Yes, you can find, but then you just take the leaf out. If there's, a, if there's a bug on there, you take it out, you throw it away. But it depends. If there's a lot of bugs, then you might not use the, that particular uh, segment of, uh, of cabbage. So if it's just one bug you find, take out the leaf, throw it away, and you check the rest. And if that's no other bugs in that, then you can use uh, that particular segment of uh, cabbage. What happens, sorry, if you don't see the white bugs? in the cabbage, because they are usually... Angry. Well, you've got to be able to see what you can see with the naked eye. I mean, what you can see with the naked eye, you don't have to use a microscope, uh, as the rabbi said before. Um, if there's a maclocus or something that you're not sure, then you can use a magnifying glass. Mm -hmm. But generally, you can, you, you, can, you can see what's on there. 
Um, and again, you you do it so many times, you know you know whether it's a bug or not. And then are you going to put it into the water? No, not the white cabbage. The red cabbage, yes. Red cabbage, because it's dark, you can't see what's uh, what's on there like you can on the white. It's white, like a white background. You can easily see whether it's black, whether it's green or red. You'll easily notice what's on there. With this, it's impossible to, to detect just by looking at the leaves. That's why you put it in the water and the same way as you would uh, washing in anything else and then you'll see what comes out of the water. Now, when you put in the water, the water will change colour, which I'll show you in a minute. Because then, watch, so the first wash, it's always, it's always best to go on to a second wash because the first wash will be so purple, so blue the water, it's difficult to see. So you generally have to do another wash so you can get a better, a better idea of what's in the, uh, uh, what's in the uh, cabbage. Is it the same process for all the other white cabbages as well? The, um Another savoy cabbage. The same process. No, no, much worse. Savoy cabbage is really, it's really bad. And with this, it's a good idea for those that may not know. When you come to, um, when you come to, um, to um, um, Sukkas and we do uh, stuffed cabbages, um, um, hunchkas, then it's a good idea. What you do is you take the cabbage, nothing to it, as it's whole. You put it in the freezer. You freeze it, then you take it out, and it's much easier then to open out without breaking the leaves. Then you check the leaves uh, as you would as if you hadn't put it in the freezer in the same way as I just did. Now, yes, you can use a void you can use a void cabbage for stuffing as well, but that is much more harder to check, and there are much more problematic situations there because there are so many crevices, and uh, you might find um, yes, it looks nicer, um, nice to have nice green uh, stuffed cabbages, but yes, if you want to. Uh, if you, if you don't want to be so um, time-consuming, time to check, then it's uh, the easiest way is with the uh, the white cabbage. Okay, with the red? Brussels cabbage. Brussels sprouts, you mean? Mm. No, we don't use Brussels sprouts because they're so small and, they're so, and they can be so infected. I, mean, I don't know, in the home, I mean, Brussels sprouts. My unofficial guess is that Brussels sprouts are not actually bad. And frozen Brussels sprouts? As a, as a policy in the London based in, we won't use them ever, ever, ever. At home, personally, I think it's fine. The frozen Brussels sprouts. How will you check them at home? I'll leave that to you. <laughs> we don't have a policy on it, so I can't say. We just don't use them at all. So you cut your uh, red cabbage into segments. You have a little um, uh, white piece here which you need to cut out because that's what's holding the leaves together. You have to cut that out so you can uh, be able to loosen loosen your leaves and then you have to you have to take each leaf apart it's not good just fanning it you've got to put it into the water and you've got to take each leaf apart it's the only way and you've got to pull out where you've got it's like this there could be animals uh, hiding inside there hibernating whatever you've got to pull that pull as much of the leaf out without breaking it as you well it doesn't matter really if you break it and then you've just got to do that so that you can and then you leave it in there for a few minutes and then you check the water after about three or four minutes. <coughs> but then, as I said, the first wash, when you're washing a lot of cabbage, you're gonna, the water will change color. So for this, it won't change very much because I'm only gonna do a few. But when I'm doing like my last job, I used to do sack loads of it, then yes, the water changes and it goes like, it goes blue. Um, so you think, uh, you, you can't check that water. So you have to then discard that water and then fill up another bowl with uh, clear water in a clean bowl with the salt and then after a few minutes you then check that water because it'll be, it'll be, the colour won't be as bad. Sorry again. Go on. Yes. Um, with cabbage and with the lettuce leaves also, often the corners will fold over or like um, with red cabbage often they'll be like folded in. That's what I'm saying, you've got to pull the leaves, you've got to pull the leaves apart. Would you discard those, those bits where it's folded over? No, 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 you, you open, like here, like where it's folded over. Yeah. So you open them out as much as you can. I mean, what are you going to use? What are you looking for in the red cabbage? We're looking what for lives on the red oh, they're just a black bug. anything that lives in any other red animals. Thrips, little red animals, bugs basically. I've heard, is and what I found is the same thrips. You can get, but again, um, you've got to be careful because they, the animals can be so camouflaged. In terms of the color, will be the same color as the the cabbage. So you've got to be careful there as well. When you, um, how deep into the cabbage we need to go? All the way. You open out every single leaf. Yeah, 85, 90 to 95 percent. We're opening. That's why it's a pascarai. Tearing it apart. Yeah. <laughs> well, I generally take all the leaves apart. I mean, that's what I was told. 
I had to do, so that's what I've been doing all along. You take all the leaves apart, you leave them in the water a few minutes. If you're doing a small quantity where the water is not going to change, you see it's starting to change colour. You see that's more clear, this is getting more blue. So when you're doing a large quantity, you have to, um, it's a good idea to take off the label as well. Um, then obviously, the more cabbage you do, the more the water will go uh, more darker, and that's why you need to change and do a fresh wash afterwards. And then you check it in the same way with a white plate, and you see if anything comes up, uh, into the, from the water onto the plate. Yeah, spring cabbage is pretty much the same. Spring cabbage is, yeah, again, you, you wash in the same way. Yeah, like a lettuce. Now, so, like we're doing this, a little story. I don't know if we have a pepper. Yes, we do. There was pepper. a discussion of pepper. Yeah, we do have a pepper somewhere. Right, anyway. We need the pepper for the recipe. Okay. Yeah, I'll just tell you why we're checking peppers. It's we our latest... That, it's it's our, our latest addition to what we check. And uh, believe me, or I mean, you know, you don't have to believe me if you don't want to, but I'm very, very hesitant to add new burdens of checking things. So what, why did it get into my head to start checking or do anything about a pepper? What a whole, hard, wholesome vegetable. What is wrong with a pepper? I walked into a certain a caterer's base and I saw in the walk-in fridge a box from Israel, Moshav, such and such, grown by Moshe, so and so, and it says, contains beneficial insects. On the box it says, contains beneficial insects. Now, <laughs> that stares you in the face. You really can't say, oh no, peppers don't have insects. They're promising you that, so I thought maybe it was a mistake. Translation from the Hebrew. Charakim, <laughs> chaydakim, <laughs> my father used to mix up a bit. Charakim, chaydakim, I mean, no, okay. The microscopic ones are the are the chaydakim, the, and, the, and then the bigger ones are called the charakim. So I thought maybe it's just a mistake. So I looked, I called Rabbi Google, Right, and I found, yes, beneficial insects are the larger insects that are added to the crop to eat the smaller insects. The smaller insects are eating the peppers, or whatever it is, so they add larger and other insects to eat the small ones, right, and the larger ones don't damage the fruit or the vegetable, they just eat the mites. And then I was listening to the radio, the garden, I, I get desperate in the car, <laughs> right? Gardener's program, sure enough, we come alumni is scalty. I hear again the, the, the plant surgeon is saying, prescribing the different kinds of insects uh, to use to eat the other insects, to save the crop. So that's, therefore, we had our expert work on it, and we started checking, you know, a few of us checking, checking, checking. It happened to be the, the Dutch peppers, which are classically the better quality peppers. And we kept finding bugs. Every time we checked, we found bugs. Uh, the, the, the biggest problem was in the stem around the crown. crown. Once you cut them out, is it oh, uh, the biggest problem was around here, but they were all over. Now, it could be. On the inside? No, outside. It could be. It could be from one country or one season, but we checked over a few months. Uh, so I won't say they're all oak problems, we could well find many of them are perfectly clean, but we found insects so many times. Now, checking it was a bit hopeless, right? So we just said we're scrubbing it down, a bit of soap, scrubbing down, especially around the top. If you want to be extra careful, it's good to throw away the top. But again, I don't like the baltashkis of wasting things or enforcing things that people will get, make a big problem with. So I just, the policy of scrubbing it, especially around here with this, a brush or your fingers, a bit of soap. But if you want to make your life easier and be extra careful, just throw away the whole top. Unless you want to stuff the, uh, the pepper and you want to use the top. the top. That's one of the reasons why I didn't ban it, because yeah, people want the top. What I found is a pepper spore, guys, in the top. You know, as you cut off the top, inside where there are the little like pips, like little seeds, there's been a lot of um, infestation underneath. We haven't in found that. I have found it. Yeah? What, yeah? what kind of insects? Like little black. Tiny, tiny little black ones in the seeds. We found that and looked and we didn't... Yeah, as far as we investigated, we didn't find it. But people tend to throw that the seeds away anyway.
Can I just remind everybody that I'm using the same water over and over again just for the purpose of this demonstration because it's much easier no, otherwise we get back. Can I get you clean water so we can put it into our secret recipe? How are we putting that ingredient into your famous soup? Um, what are you putting into your, your gazpacho? Probably tomato, the basil might be better. Okay, so should I give you clean water? Yeah. Okay, yes. Okay, so yeah, um, yeah because uh, to go back and forth all the time, getting changing water, we'd be here all night. So you won't, you have to realize that I'm just doing this for the demonstration purposes, but at home, as anywhere else, you would change the water each and every time and have clean, fresh water in a clean bowl. Okay. So what do you need me to... Get ready for you, so that we can put in, we can start casting around. Well, I'm just going to do the uh, blueberries and the uh, strawberries. Those are not uh, going into the sponsor. No, I know. But what I'm saying is, once I've just checked those, and I've just finished with these two, then we can clean down the table, and then we have a clean table. So maybe pass the lettuce bowl up with clean water in there, so we can do this. Okay, we'll do, and try well, I've down got two spare bowls, you can have these two bowls. Okay. And do you want me to wash and scrub down the pepper? Do you trust me? <laughs> um, so you better do it. A really small shop, I would have seen the same that they're using it in the kitchen for all the kitchen at the same time. It's kind of the same. Does it mention the airtime I think I'm in it? Yeah. Yes, uh, any leaf that is a uh, herb leaf, it's, it's the same, it's, it's flat and it's washed in exactly the same way as any other, anything else, I even even the uh, dill, however, it's all washed in the same way. So, yes, anything, it's all washed the same way, principle is the same. Yeah, mix exactly the same, everything is exactly the same principle. Yeah. Can we do the berries? Uh, yeah, I'm just going to <coughs> last two things and then I'll go to the berries and then we finish them. All the first you don't allow it all. That's correct. No. Although you've got to be careful though when you're buying pre-packed uh, lettuces, mixed leaves, you'll find sometimes there will be watercress in that. And watercress is uh, very problematic with a lot of the animals that can be in that. Is watercress banned? Watercress is banned. There are two problems with watercress. Number one, uh, whichever one you want to put it, but they have translucent worms. And number two, and someone pointed it out to me, I was at a base and these things appeared, I didn't know what it was because we don't allow it, so I never see it. Uh, I said, it's watercress. And he, there are little flowers there. He opened up a flower and there was a bug inside the flower, which would never come out by, by washing, which is what we do. Uh, but also it's the, the translucent worms and the watercress. Um, same with the wild mushrooms, um, snails and the worms. Secura crest was very interesting. One day, this is like a sign of the business. People made what we call in Gemara, Gezerah Shava. Right? They compared the words and they said, we allow salad crest, which is also known as uh, mustard crest. You'll see that everywhere. All the egg, egg uh, sandwiches right, have what? Salad crest. All right, it's quite clean. I won't say anything is perfect, nothing is perfect, but nonetheless, it's reasonable to allow it without any checking. So the caterers wanted to be creative, and they brought in Secure Crest, which is a generic name for about five or six kinds of little tiny garnish things, as they say. And uh, they thought, okay, it's all Crests, but it was all grown in the punnets, right? All grown in the punnets. So we went along with this for, I don't know, a week or two or three. And we started examining carefully, and one thing we found was in the material, the cotton, we found little earwigs, like miniature slugs, in the, in the material, number one. Number two, these insects, right, you can't even see the insects, even if they tell you, I don't know, yeah. but nonetheless, by looking carefully enough and magnifying, the things that look like the seeds are actually insects, and some of them are seeds, so you can't check something like that, forget it. And there's a third kind which is so bushy, again, so tangled and bushy, that it'll be hopeless to try and check it in our method. So we said, forget all the secure crests. Salad crest is the only one we allow or even bother checking. Alfalfa? Alfalfa, I think we allow without checking, actually. Alfalfa, yeah. And bean, yeah. Green sprouts as well. Yeah, the cream. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 
As soon as you check the outside, it's worth. It's a good idea to split it open always. I don't think it's obligatory, but you do have to check the outside. If there's any damage, black spots, holes, then you certainly are mukhriyab to split it open and check the inside. The same thing would apply. If it's any kind of damage on the outside, which is a sign that something came in or came out, or eggs, any black, anything damaged on the outside, you have to split it open. And if not, it's still a good idea, but I don't think it's obligatory. What would damage have to check that? Black spots, rotten, extra mushy. Yeah. I know that fish is off the menu tonight. I was wondering, is, there, is it complicated fish, or, or is there a simple tip for checking fish? I don't have any tips. I haven't ever checked fish, so I wouldn't want to venture anything. We're not, yeah. Check brown rice. Brown, things from this country that we find that we don't check any kind of rice. Also not brown rice. No. Yeah. Barley? Yes. We can't check. We can't puree raspberries, but we can buy them pre-done. Pre what if it's in the rest of the anyway? Do you have like a broccoli and you're supposed to puree it anyway? Mm -hmm. Puree the kugel. Oh, the broccoli. broccoli. Right. Can you repeat the question? Right. The question is, can you puree broccoli? And especially since it's in the recipe that way, you're not doing it on purpose. So it's hard to, to dwell on individual things. Raspberries, I know, are perfectly fine. No, are perfectly infested <laughs> and hopeless. I would say no. And then there are things that I mentioned, chicory, almost bug-free. I wouldn't hesitate to just blitz it. Or for that matter, basil, which has the occasional bug. And I learned in the Shemitah year that it's all grown in hothouses, in greenhouses. It's not uh, a lake hatif with extra care, but basically basil is all grown in, in greenhouses for their agricultural reason. And that's probably why there are not many bugs. And that kind of thing, and I got this from Rabbi Pai, by the way, his safer is where I got this idea. Um, where the bugs are only occasional, right? Called miyut she'eno matsui. I would say it's fine to make basil oil, as the caterers do. If you're just going to blend it, just blend it. Broccoli is often highly infested, sometimes not at all. I really hard to define the answer to that. Because it's sometimes very infested, I would say not to puree it without checking it. But you could use the, uh, the stem. Yeah, you could use the stem, yeah. You yes. have to open up we haven't investigated it, so I wouldn't venture to say. I know there have been very great concerns, and someone mentioned that they found yeah. an insect inside, so I wouldn't want to, well, you know, I still eat them. I still eat them. Dates we do, dates we slice open in the middle. You have to be careful, yeah. because I've had dates that I've used from uh, um, Egypt, which are highly infested. It depends where, again, it depends the time of year and where you get them from. But yes. certainly Egyptian dates I found very infested. Fresh or dry? Yeah, so fresh, fre fresh dates or, or dried dry. dates. Fresh or dry, dried. or yeah. frozen for that matter. The ones I use were dried. Yeah, we slice them through the middle. And you're checking. What are you checking for? Most likely small white worms yeah. or clusters of black eggs. It's you know, you get these dragged yeah. letters with figs and apricots. You have to open them. You have to open them. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah. 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 And if you want to know where to be more concerned rather than less, it's with the uh, larger or double onions, which have more space inside. <coughs> Probably the smallest bugs you could ever imagine, my, our expert bug checker uh, pointed out, that things so small, you would never believe they're there, except that they, they walked around. Um, nonetheless, we didn't find it consistently or pervasively, so we don't check them. If you want to be careful, if you find a very big, luscious Spanish onions, uh, if you're very moist and hot in Spain, or double onions, then I would wash it down well. I wouldn't go checking and getting your eyes in trouble. But I would, yeah, I would give it a good wash. Yes, someone else's hand up. Yeah. Um, on, this, on the skin of oranges and lemons, um, these little black dots. Can be black dots. There could be scale insects. I couldn't tell you how to know which is which. I would definitely. Yeah, if you're going to use the, like the zest, right, 
If you're going to use the zest, I would definitely scrub it down or pick them off with a toothpick. If you're actually going to use that skin, definitely concerned about it. Yes? Dried apricots, do you have to soak them before you check them for worms? Um, with dried apricots, we do use the mensid. I'm not sure anyone's name here, but the, the spot check we almost never use. But in terms of apricots, we would. We would slice open the first three, a random three. If we find insects in those, we check the whole bag. But, uh, what, dried apricots? Yeah. But, you don't you do, but do you soak them first or do you... No, you slice it, slice it down the middle. Dried yeah. or, or. It might be harder to do, but... Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 because you can Go. open them. Most of them you can yeah. open because they're taking yeah. the tip out. So you can... You, you slice them in the middle. middle. You don't... Because there's so many um, pieces on the outside. Find things within the pieces on the outside. We've never, I haven't find it to be an, an issue. Blackberries. Blackberries. Like this. Blackberries, we just, I would not suggest using them at all. What? I can tell you a method privately. Blueberries. 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 Oh, blueberries. We're going to say blueberries right now. Rabbi? <laughs> Bali? In this country, no, we don't check right now. Unless it's sitting for a very long time. Okay. May I ask, um, Lemons. Most lemons these days are waxed. And yeah. how do you deal with the zest if there's wax on the outside? Is the wax okay? Um, to this, I haven't investigated it, so I, don't, I wouldn't want to answer. If you call, if you call me another, another time, I'm, I'll try and investigate it. Uh, okay, blueberries. Just a couple more things to go. Um, Do you want to give me the things for the gazpacho so I can get it served? <laughs> well, <laughs> it's one in the uh, kitchen. It's over here. It's one in the kitchen? It's over here. Oh, well then, yeah. So I just want to do these two, and then I can clear down the table, to bring the soup in, and uh, then I can serve it. Okay, blueberries, again, um, put them into some water. With salt? No, you don't need to put <laughs> no, you don't need to put salt. Um, if it's very in, if it's very bad, you might put a little uh, bit of soap. Um, yeah. It's it's in the crown. If there are insects, because it's here, and I have to acknowledge. Although there, it's written Spanish blueberries. That was that's where we happened to find them. They are the Spanish things generally. Yeah. Generally, and it's no rule, but are worse. Uh, it's just under the crown. You might find these little straw-colored things. We don't always check them to tell the truth, but we're we're moving towards checking them. Other countries too, then. Yeah, they could be anywhere. It could be anywhere. Yes. I mean, it's a good idea. It's a good idea with the hands just to just to go like that and bring out the leaf because the leaf is pulled. It's 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 pushed back. So you do that. You open up the leaf, and then it's, there's more chance for the. Uh, I want to come out. I don't mean leaves, I mean the. Well. The coals, yeah. You, you, you can see there, there is a thing. Because I eat these breakfast. Again, the water will change, uh, the water will change colour, uh, depending on how many uh, blueberries you're going to uh, wash. But obviously, it's good if you're washing a lot. Uh, more than the one panel we're doing, then you would uh, again, like with the red cabbage, you would change and do another wash so that the, uh, because then the next water you would use the clean water, it would be more clear like that, and there'd be more chance to see any bugs um, in there. Because even uh, even if you do, there might bugs, there might be bugs in that first wash, but still it does mean to say that it's bug free. So you, uh, after you've taken it out of there, so you go and you do another wash and you check uh, that way. But generally you don't find uh, too much. What about frozen blueberries? Frozen blueberries the same way, no? Frozen blueberries? And the moment I would say with so you can just use that. Well the problem with any berries, when they're frozen, they're gonna be more problematic because when you when you wanna check them, they they're gonna once they've defrosted, they're very uh, they're very soft and very pliable. Raisins. So what do you do? Uh, only the lowest quality have any problems. It's better to use fresh anyway. Um, I mean, we only found bugs in the lowest quality Indian, you know, fifth rate raisins. Normal raisins, it would not be an issue.
Go and check that in blueberries. Wow. Strawberries is the last thing we'll do. Now, strawberries, strawberries can be very problematic too. You've got to take off the green at the top here, but you take a little bit of the, uh, the flesh with it. But you mustn't take too much, otherwise, you'll make a hole here in the middle if you take too much off. And then, if there are animals in in the, on the strawberry, they'll crawl straight into that hole and then it's going to be even more harder to check. So you just take off a little bit of the uh, flesh with the green. The green must come off because that's where most of the animals will hide. But of course, here on the, on the uh, outer flesh, you can get animals that will be in there as well, as I've um, found before. And in, one, in that bowl, there should be at least one red uh, uh, animal. It's like a spider, very tiny. It was red, same colour as this, it came off the strawberry, even after I'd taken off the green part. Do you, do you not find that once you take the green part off and put them in the water, they actually become so soggy and terrible? But that's the only way uh, we some, can check. What someone actually said they do, is they put it in the first wash with the, the green part, <coughs> let all the little insects and whatever's on there come off, leave it in there, then put it into salt water with a green mm -hmm. part, and then the next Wash. But then you're doing so many more washes. Oh, so they, 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 they you have to save it from getting soggy. <laughs> but it's soggy because you're putting in so many washes. Well, they say when the green part is kept on, it actually is so much firmer. Well, that's why I'm uh, saying is you don't, you don't take too much off, so you get a hole in the middle there, so that the water goes inside the uh, the uh, strawberry. Mm -hmm. That's when it can be even more soggy. Do you wash in each individual strawberry afterwards? No, you wash it. Well, you put them. You. I'm just. For demonstrate, but you take off the uh, top, you put it in the bowl with your um, washing up liquid, um, and you check. Same as before, but you do not wash yeah. each individual. We do scrub, scrub, a bit of a scrub, one or two, or a maximum three at a time, a bit of a scrub. With your fingers, fingers. With your fingers. With your fingers. yeah. Each one, one or two at a time. Once you've got them all in the water, I'm just at the moment a bit of a scrub. Uh, if you're finding bugs. Then we add the fairy liquid. We don't automatically use the fairy liquid. Some authorities automatically use the fairy liquid. Um, we only use it if we find those bugs. Yes, it's worth it. Wash it off. It does affect the taste. Uh, but if you find it clean, we wouldn't necessarily use the fairy liquid. So you can do this on Chavez or not? Uh, but they don't even allow it to, on Chavez. Our methods, they allow on Chavez. See, if you, if you go down with the, with the thumb all the way down the strawberry, you're, put, you're opening up the kernels and any animals that might be on the strawberry hopefully will then should come out into the water if there are any. Does it make a difference which way you're holding the strawberry? Like you're going up or you're going down? Or? Well no, because the kernels are going up like that, you're going against the grain, so you're open. So you're, so you're going against the... Uh, so you're going from the pointy end up. Downwards. Down. Yeah. Yes. And again, if you... If you're going to see when you put the strawberries in there, even before you start to go with the fingers, you see there are um, any kind of animals, you put some. Uh, is that salt water or just plain water? From the no, at the moment this is uh, plain water. Should it be cold water? It's okay. Tap cold or tepid? No salt. No salt. We don't usually use salt in strawberries. Julia Child says to use wine. Wine. <laughs> And then you have to wash it out <laughs> to be able to put the check in the water. <coughs> right, again, with a small plate, you go around the bowl know, and you check very slowly, holding up the, uh, the plate just uh, underneath the water, and you check the water to see if there's anything in the water, and that's how you check to see if there are any bugs in the water that way. Do you have to do a second wash? Or? Well, if there are bugs in there, yes. So if there is no bugs in your in your any any wash that you do, if there's no bugs in your first wash, that's it. You, it's bug free. You enjoy, it, eat, you know. But if you you just said you had to, before you said you had to do two washes. If the first wash was if the first wash was infested, and the second ah, so if the first wash was infested, and the second wash, you do a second wash that wasn't infested, it wasn't infested. You do a third wash. If that's not infested. It's clear. If the third wash is infested, and the first wash, if the first wash is infested, you do a second wash. If that's not infested, 
and you do a third wash without disinfested, you have to then go again and do a fourth wash. If that's clear, you then have to have a fifth wash, which has to be clear. You always have to have two clear washes, unless the first wash is completely clear of bugs, well then that's it. You can go straight ahead and do whatever you want with it, because it's, it's passed, so long as the first wash is clear. Okay, I think that's... I'd like to uh, thank you, Rabbi Hillel.